Hey guys, it's Greg from BitCombin again, and today I'm going to show you all my top five networking commands that you should know on Linux. I'll be up front here and mention that these commands really are not that special or anything really. Uh, so if you're some Linux pro who's been around a terminal before, then this video is frankly not for you. But if you're a Linux newbie looking to learn Linux, then these commands would be great to learn as a great step forward in your Linux adventures. All you gotta do is find a Linux machine, crack open a terminal, grab a nice cup of tea, or whatever gets your brain all, <clears throat> or whatever gets your brain all floaty to absorb information and settle in. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. Our first command for today is ping. Simply put, ping is used to quickly check if your computer can reach another computer on a network. Neat. But how do you use it? Well, you just gotta type in ping in your terminal, like so, and then type the host that you want to test connecting to, which can be an IP address or a host name. A popular host to use here is 8.8.8.8, .8 which is one of Google's public DNS IP addresses, and it's really good for testing whether or not you can get to the interwebs. Hit enter, and now you should start seeing your ping command work its magic with a ping attempt every second showing up. By default, ping will run indefinitely, so you can terminate it by pressing control C, and it'll end with a summary of how the session went. So what you see here is a summary with some useful statistics about your ping session. Things like the average latency of the packets, the percentage of packets dropped, if there were any. And this makes it great for testing if you've got your machine's network settings both configured correctly by checking if you can actually get to other hosts and also troubleshooting network performance issues by seeing if there's like latency or packet loss. Conveniently, ping is also available on Windows, though its parameters are a little bit different. You can still do the basic ping hostname, but by default, it only does four ping attempts. And if you want it to run indefinitely, then you need to use the dash T flag. Um, or if you want to set like a count, uh, a set number of like 10 or 20 uh, ping attempts, then you need to use the dash N flag instead of dash C. There are some other differences, sure, but for the most part, it pretty much works the same. Moving on, our second command for today is SSH or secure shell. This opens up an encrypted shell on a remote machine, which lets you use and manage remote systems just like you would from a local terminal. If that seems a little bit complicated, trust me, it's simpler than it seems, though they can be more complicated, but anyways, just, just bear with me. All right, before I show you the command, let's start with a hypothetical scenario. Let's say I have a remote server that I want to install updates on called Apps V1. It's a server that I use for hosting little web apps internally, but for the purposes of this demo, that doesn't really matter. To SSH to this box, all you gotta do is type in SSH, the user that you wanna connect as, which I'm going to use BitGoblin in this instance, the at symbol, and then the host or IP address that you wanna to connect to, which in this case, like I said, is apps-v1. Hit enter, and if this is the first time you're connecting to this host, you'll see this little authenticity of hosts cannot be established. This is just a little mechanism for SSH to help protect you against man in the middle attacks. Essentially, it just shows you if you've connected to this host before, and if you haven't, then something might be screwy. But for this case, we can just type in yes to get past this prompt, and then we're prompted for our password, which I'll just type in really quick. And boom, we are now on the server. Say I wanna update the server. I can just run a normal sudo dnf update, hit enter, because I need a sudo command, I need to type in my password for this, and we can proceed with a dnf update just like normal. That really wasn't a whole lot of updating, it just updated one package, but I think you get the point by now. On top of the fact that SSH lets you manage remote systems very easily from a terminal and uses industry standard encryption to, well, encrypt your traffic, SSH also has tons of other uses. And when I say tons, I actually mean like a metric button, like a lot. You can use it as a poor man's remote access VPN by forwarding traffic over an SSH tunnel. You can use it to encrypt file transfers by combining it with tools like rsync or just using the built-in SCP command. You can use it as a SOX proxy to encrypt your traffic so your ISP can't snoop on what you're doing online. You can even use it to mount remote file systems like a shared home directory using SSHFS, which is just a file system over SSH. And the list just goes on and on. It's pretty nifty if you ask me. Our third command today is the IP command. This command lets us view and control various aspects of your machine's network devices. Since it is such a vast command, today we'll be focusing specifically on the IP address and IP route subcommands, or IPA and IPR for short, respectively. IP address shows the network configuration for any connected network devices on your machine. If you type in IP space address, oops, address, type it right, 
This command shows us the network configuration for any network network devices on your machine. For example, this output right here shows the five devices my machine has. ENP 5S0 for my Ethernet device, WLP 4S0 for my Wi-Fi device, uh, this virtual BR0 is for my local KVM virtual machines, and this Docker 0 device is my Docker container network bridge, and this LO device, which is the network loopback interface. If you don't know what this is, don't worry. It basically just lets your computer talk to itself without relying on any of the other network interfaces being up. Every computer has it, and I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to read up on it. But anyways, let's take a look at this ENP 5S0 device, which is my main interface connected by Ethernet. We can see the device's MAC address, we can see the IP address and subnet mask, we can see the, the broadcast address, we can see just a ton of information about this specific interface, any options used to bring it up, uh, IP6 address if, it, if it's configured, again, just a ton of stuff about every interface. IP route, on the other hand, shows us the configured network routes on your device, which is essentially just a list of rules for your machine to determine where and through what interface your machine should send traffic. And this is a good thing to check if you are manually configuring your IP address and your settings appear to be correct, but you're still having trouble contacting other hosts on your network or getting to the internet. This command doesn't just show you the routing table. You can also use it to uh, manage network routes, you add them or delete them, but I will also say if you're using DHCP to automatically configure your network, like 99% of home devices use, then you probably don't want to go ham modifying routes and just let your router handle it. So overall, while these commands do go a bit deeper and can be used to control network interfaces and routing, in my experience, I found them more useful for quickly checking if network configuration has applied when setting up a machine and troubleshooting network problems. The fourth brain challenger for today is DIG, or Domain Information Groper. Yes, that's the real name. It's okay to grope domain information, but don't grope other people without consent, please. Anyways, moral discussion aside, what this tool does is, per its name, grab zone information about a domain name, and it's very useful for troubleshooting those pesky name not known errors. It's also pretty simple to use, so let me just show you really quick. Let's say you've started up a cool new site at google.com and you're all excited that it's ready to go live, but you want to make sure that the site's name resolves first before posting about it to your friends and family to avoid any uh, you know, future troubleshooting issues. So in your terminal to check it, you would just type in dig space google.com and enter, easy enough. You get a lot of information here. It's pretty much all important, but the main thing you wanna focus on here for this scenario at least, is this answer section where you can see google.com has A records, hence this in A, A records, um, with uh, several IP addresses, which means that names will resolve. But what if you want to check other DNS services in the event your local one was just a fluke? That is also very simple. Use the at IP address notation to specify a name server, like so. Type in dig, like before, space, at, and then the IP address of a name server you wanna use, Another good one is Cloudflare's quad one service or 1.1.1.1. And then the domain name you want to check, google.com, enter, and boom, you see the answer section. Now, I will note here that we did get different results for our two commands. The first one using my local DNS server returns six different A records. And then the second command using Cloudflare's servers directly returned this one IP address. In this case, that's a toll they find. This is probably due to some like geolocation IP resolving stuff. But the important bit is that the names did resolve and honestly, I don't have any trouble getting to google.com. Oh, and what if you've also set up a mail server on your domain so you can have this super official looking email like billyjoe at google.com. Again, this is also really simple. Just enter the record type you wanna search after the domain name, just like so. You do Google space, wow, well, Google dig space, google.com space and then mx for uh, mail transfer record something like that mx is what you want to use and we can see in the answer section we got google.com in mx and smtp.google.com awesome never forget if there's a network problem it's very likely that dns that's causing it it's always dns say it with me it's always dns and our final command for today we're going to take a look at is iperf or iperf3 as it's named on a lot of Linux distros to differentiate the newer version from the older iperf2. The gist of this tool is to test the network bandwidth between two hosts. 
This one is slightly more complicated to run since you need to be on both the client and the server to run it, but it's really not that bad. Trust me. So returning to the terminal, we can see that on the left is my local PC and on the right is that apps v1 server I was talking about before just over SSH. Both these systems have iperf3 installed and what we got to do here is on either side, we need to start an iperf server with iperf3 s. So let's see on the app server, let's just do iperf3 dash s. We can see server listening on port 5201. Easy enough. And then on the other side on my local computer, I'm going to do iperf three dash lowercase c and then the name of the server I want to connect to which is you know apps v1 hit enter and we can see on both terminals that there's a connection and it's transferring data between the two we just got to give it a second for the finish and we can see at the end on the client and the server we can see the total amount of data sent and we can also see the rate that the data was sent at in this case it was 579 megabit per second which is actually more than my mocha adapters are rated for but yeah I, I guess I'll take it but either way, hopefully you can still see the benefit here that you can test total network bandwidth when you're setting things up for high throughput applications and it's all super easy. Oh, and one more thing really quick, all of these commands are easily available on pretty much any of the popular Linux distributions. The first three are usually installed by default, but if not, I have the package names for all five of them for Debian slash Ubuntu and Red Hat based systems on the screen right now. All right, guys, that's all I have for this one. And now I want to hear from you all about what your favorite Linux networking command is down in the comment section below, or also mention if I got something wrong so you all know that I'm just an idiot pretending to know things. If you didn't like the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button and also consider getting subscribed and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss my future videos. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us or if you need it, we can try to help you with your Linux problems. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.